it is where art and science meet right and uh, this is exactly where uh, the principles of a man uh, who founded amongst the first in schools of design really comes in uh Walter Gropius he is a german architect uh he founded the school of bauhaus the bauhaus school of design uh in 1990 and he was amongst the first amongst probably the first to actually want to make art accessible to everyone right and the way he did this was he brought artists and craftsmanship together in the school of thought and then created the bauhaus school of design right and it's quite poetic actually that very funny too that this guy didn't know how to draw he was an architect he didn't know how to draw uh, he used to pay his students to make his you know this his architectural drawings and all of his uh, his renditions and stuff like that they would be made by his students and he would pay them to do it right uh, and of course you can find enough about this person online but what is very important is the principles that were kind of uh, that evolved uh, thanks to this bauhaus school of design and allowed this person to therefore become uh instrumental in how a lot of people think about design today and a lot of these principles are very relevant right uh the bauhaus school of design from the beginning now bauhaus means construction house i'm assuming that's clearly german out there uh it's sought to unify craft and art and it is not by working with artists and craftsmanship separately it brought both these people both these types of people into one under one roof in one school and said okay let's create a curriculum that brings together art and craft we talk about some of these little elements of design in india that have kind of these are all parts of the parts of the part of the india design report as well but these are also these have also changed over a period of time and i'm quoting some examples which i believe uh, are relevant even today and are also uh, important from a cultural context right so the first one i'd like to ex- show you as an example is the lota uh, everyone knows this as the lota matka gada chambu kodam uh, it's multifunctional it's a unique design you must have seen people in villages and in the cities carry colorful versions of this carry water for long distances uh, to carry water back home keep water at home uh, when you use this in the as a purna kalasha in the sacred context it becomes the pot of plenty uh, you put a coconut on top a bunch of betel leaves on the side and it becomes uh, the symbol of goddess lakshmi when you're doing a puja right the same pot transforms into an image of the demons uh, head to ward off evil in some cases as well right so the versatility of this product from the time when you're born and somebody sprinkles uh, you know uh, sacred uh, water on you to the point to you when when somebody passes away and you take the ashes in the crematorium all the way to the sacred river by you basically take your entire journey in this in this in this lota essentially right and it has grown as a cultural symbol it has evolved it has it is a very important part of indian history vedic history as well as our lives today everybody's house has a silver or a brass or a bronze version of this at home at some point in time you must have come across this in a puja in a temple at home wherever it is and it's a very important symbol of who we are as an who we are as indians especially uh, right and uh, this is one of the uh, uh, artifacts identified in the india report as well as a symbol of uh, what india is capable of uh, in terms of creating uh, good design as well and you can find more about it as well uh, The next one and one of my favorites is the ambassador. This obviously no needs a, not much of an introduction, uh, but it has been a part of our history. It was it came to India from the Morris garages back then, uh, and of course it was manufactured in Kolkata. But essentially, what made this car so versatile, uh, right from the from carrying our our prime minister, our presidents as the white amp ambassador to the black ambassador, where people get transported to <laughs> their uh, graveyard or the crematorium. uh it basically covers the entire journey in between uh whether it's a taxi whether it's a personal car it was a status symbol of sorts and i still find this car amongst the most elegant of designs that was curated and created for the indian subcontinent uh by this company at that point in time uh also one of the most important reasons why this car was really successful as a personal car as a taxi was because the front seat was a bench uh four people a uh, relatively thin people let me be honest could actually sit in the front seat and the back seat this car could carry eight people 
you do not have a car today that can carry eight people in that size right uh, for a country that was that needed mobility this was amongst the best things you could get as a taxi right so just one example of how this how versatile this car was and is uh, right uh, next one again one of my favorite uh, pieces of fabric uh, long pieces of fabric is the sari and uh, you are everyone here understands the cultural significance of the sari and just how versatile it is in terms of how many different versions of uh, adorning this particular fabric exists today right you have people uh, you have people wearing it uh, on cultural events you have people wearing it for pujas you have people wearing it for special events like a marriage or a, or a festival so it's basically extremely versatile and the best part is that it's still evolving there are people still using the sari in different ways and trying to don it in in completely different ways that haven't been done in the past and i believe uh, that is the simplicity and the effectiveness of this particular fabric uh, in in just in terms of how versatile it is still and how relevant it still is in the in the world today right uh, it it is apart from being a symbol of grace and elegance and all of that it's just a symbol in my opinion of an indian woman as well i'm not being i'm not trying to be uh, uh, particularly uh, one sided there but i'm just saying that is just an elegant piece of fabric that just epitomizes what i'd consider an indian woman is that you just know that someone knows how to wear a sari as well but anyways let's go ahead uh the next uh is the ghungru uh, i'm not sure if anyone here is uh, acquainted with the dance forms but um, the gungru and i didn't know this for a very long time uh was not meant to be an addition it was meant to be uh, it wasn't just meant to be a random addition to the dance form uh it was meant to enhance the footwork while the dancer performed so the objective was that the dancers would stay in touch with the rhythm the taal the laya of the dance that they are doing whether it's whatever the dance form is bharatanatyam kathak whatever the dance form but it's also meant to enable uh the person viewing the dance uh enhance their experience of actually seeing the dance form to connect to the rhythm and connect to the dancer on a separate level so you know you're not just seeing the dancer you're also hearing the dancer that is a very important aspect of enhancing that so it might have been a very simple addition to a dancer's attire but in my opinion it's amongst the most important because it just brings out the dance uh whatever the dance form in a completely different way your experience of that dance and the sound that you hear is is i think uh multiplied many times over just by the just by the fact that the person is wearing a ghungru and again there is uh in uh, from what i've understood there is obviously variety in the number of these ghungrus within the ghungru that you're wearing as well so whether it's a 45 or a 50 number and there are more ghungrus to be attached and the the knowledge and the understanding of the dancer also kind of varies with that uh, but again i'm not really as acquainted so i'm going to reserve comment there but like i said this is another very important aspect of design not intended to be designed but intended by someone who thought about it to enhance the experience so whatever the person tried to do definitely help in enhancing the experience and therefore became a very normal part of dance uh, in the world right uh, a lot of people lot of uh, international dance forms from what i understand what i have seen and i did a little youtube search as well actually try to use the ghungru too kind of cool there uh The next one, and this is my personal favorite, is the mortar and the pestle, or the grinding stone that we most normally have at home. And uh, you know, in my old house, we used to have this big, big, big stone slab with a big grinding stone that we used to use to make the masalas and the chutneys and uh, and the uh, the additions to our food as well. And it's finding its way back into our into our homes as uh, very elegant looking objects in our kitchen tray, right? Uh, but it's a very important part of Indian cooking, and in just how we mix and match these masalas and chutneys together right yes we have the mixes we have the food processors and we have all these fancy equipments out there but it's just how well these this does it and uh the flavor and the taste that it adds to it now this isn't this isn't a designed object but it's definitely an important artifact of india that kind of curates the quality of food that you have and and the way in which you have it right so again not intended to be a designed object but just something that was born out of necessity and need but the way it has evolved over the last many years and still found its way back into our kitchens today just shows how relevant this is in terms of creating flavor 
and that is the that is if someone ever designed uh, said how do i add more flavor to my food uh, the one of the designed object would be something like this in my opinion right uh, you can add more flavor just by the kind of stone you use or the kind of process you use in grinding how much uh, whether you want it ground a uh, fine ground date or you want it coarse ground date it just varies but again that entire control of doing that is in the hands of the person doing it and the love with which they do it enhances the quality of food you have so not not an intended design but just an artifact of indian ethos indian culture that necessitated us to have good food culture therefore is a definition of a very large group of people a small group of people whatever it is uh, that can be impacted by virtue of the the artifacts the behaviors and the metrics which are the visible uh, elements and then of course you have the beliefs values and assumptions which are more difficult to change and take a much longer time right uh, and here is where design can play a role you can design uh, artifacts and objects that will allow somebody to evolve as a culture as well right uh, one ex- one example i can one on an example but it's it's more of like a like a, thought process that i have right uh, if if there was a bunch of people who were very dangerous right they carried a bunch of weapons they 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 murdered and pillaged their neighboring villages and looted and killed people uh, what is the perception that you would have of these this this tribe or this group of people that they have to be feared that they are dangerous that you cannot habit you cannot cohabitate with them you cannot live with them they are dangerous by virtue of who they are and suddenly if these these dangerous people decided to say no not i need to i need to change the way people look at me i need to change the way people look at my 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 tribe for example they, they cannot do it overnight they have to change their clothes they have to change their attire they have to change their belief systems and that will be a very long drawn process and they'll have to infuse designed protocols designed uh, objects designed uh, artifacts designed clothing that will allow them to change perceptions of people and how people see them right uh, and in my opinion design can drive that change right one another good example in this case is uh, of how uh, <clears throat> hitler uh, adolf hitler we all know the man uh, changed the way german society perceived uh, mobility right uh, it was always a very difficult aspect and basically to allow his country to grow Uh, and he was a visionary let's be honest uh, he got ferdinand porsche of the porsche fame to design the uh, volkswagen beetle uh, the beetle and uh, of course volkswagen was manufacturing it at that point in time and it went on to become the symbol of mobility in uh, pre war post war germany at that point in time and basically allowed people to start commuting start uh, for a for a much far lesser price than say a a uh, much more expensive vehicle from the other more luxurious german brands at that point in time and it was uh this element that essentially drove people to kind of start commuting start connecting start industrialization started to happen far more effectively than it did in the past and it did transform the economy it did transform the way uh, uh people started to see germany as well of course post war at that point in time uh and of course mobility in whatever forms today still allows us to do that uh, one among the first things when a country tries to do is, when it allows for a change of perceptions uh within society is like like how our government today is trying to enable people to buy electric cars and go electric right they actually it's a very slow and steady process they are changing artifacts they're changing behaviors they are providing metrics to people to show the value of doing of of going into that change and we are seeing people buying electric vehicles we are seeing people look at electric vehicles as an option and of course we will see that change happen probably 10 years from now where a lot of our vehicles on the road will be electric but well it has to start somewhere and that's where it started what i'm going to do next is uh, use a bunch of design objects that have been designed or uh, whether they are design objects or they are campaigns or they are uh, uh, you know uh, examples of good design and show and smash some myths out there okay um uh, So that's why it's called let us smash some myths right uh the first one 24 gallons of water is heavy does anyone know what 24 gallons of water is or how much 1 gallon of water is i think gallon is about 4.8 liters right uh so 
that's about 115 liters of water right i'm sorry my math is really bad i'm just using a calculator to tell you that uh right uh, so about 100 liters of water can you imagine somebody carrying 100 liters of water on their head absolutely not right so this particular product is what we'd like to call the innovative hippo roller that was designed by two south african engineers right uh, you must have seen people across the world can traveling long distances to carry water back to their villages for cooking for bathing for hygiene for cleanliness and all of that and it's predominantly women and children doing it you don't find the men doing it so in africa when this problem arose and women and children are spending long periods of time to get water back home somebody thought about this and they said uh, we'll create a drum which they can roll on the floor and that became the ex- the perfect product that allowed these women and children to then spend lesser time in bringing water back bringing more water back in one in one single trip so they could bring back almost 100 110 liters of water uh, in one trip the women could indulge in agriculture and managing home the children could go to school so there was a societal change they did not solve the water crisis trust me this wasn't an initiative to try and solve the world's water problem but definitely it provided a societal change that allowed the women and children to spend their time more effectively doing things that will allow them to grow as a society as opposed to this cater to their most basic need of water right uh, another interesting thing about this product is and you can obviously read up about it online is of course that it has a very cool filter filter system that can be screwed on as a cap on the top and the water can therefore also be filtered and drunk and then allowed the people to get access to clean drinking water which from what we all know is a huge problem whether it's africa or even in india for that matter right another cool uh, myth people don't go and give way to ambulances You must have all seen how people today make way for an ambulance, and this is a very brilliant initiative in my opinion by the government of India and whoever else who was responsible for it for driving the marketing campaign and all of that. Uh, that over a period of time, I think it took about a year, almost a year or two, to kind of change perceptions, uh, have marketing campaigns, ad campaigns running on TV that made people realize that that could be somebody I know, that could be somebody from my family, and I have as a human, it is my. responsibility to make way for an ambulance so it drove a very it was a ad campaign that ran on tv during dinner time but the one the beauty of that is that it changed society's perceptions that instead of blocking an ambulance people today actually make way you see that people park on the left or park on the right turn on their hazard lights and basically come to the side and allow an ambulance to pass even in even in peak bangalore tra- peak hour bangalore traffic i have seen it happen and it it definitely always brings us joy is smile to my face to see that happen given what i have seen in the past right and i think it's one of the most brilliant initiatives that was that has ever been achieved on this scale in in, in an economy like in, in, a, in a country that's as populous as ours uh, another brilliant example is this escalators are faster uh, this is a very cool uh, campaign that wanted to that that that, that the uh, government or the local government wanted to make their people fitter they wanted people to not use escalators therefore one consume consume less electricity but also get people to focus more on fitness so they made their steps uh, musical uh, so those aren't just colors on those steps those are actually musical steps you can actually climb up and down and make little music of your own uh, and this is the campaign that was then mimicked across the world and it became a super cool thing to do and everybody would just jump up and down the staircases for fun uh would you choose to use a staircase because it was musical it was it, it added a certain delight and that's what design is supposed to do it's a very simple change to that staircase probably a little expensive too from what i understand but just that much got people to climb stairs more uh you burnt about 20 30 calories extra when you walk to walk to your uh, subway station and then uh, you know came back home so it just enabled a uh, fitter society a healthier society a happier society it is also supposed to delight as well as achieve a secondary level of um, subconscious like you just be just got fitter without actually asking for it right if you enjoyed it while while you're doing it too uh they gamified the whole climbing the staircase uh casts are big clunky and heavy i'm not sure how many people have seen this but uh, you must have seen the clunky cast that people must have worn and across me i've worn a couple of them in my life uh they're not nice they they're very itchy and scratchy on the inside they're very difficult to wear they make accessibility to your skin really bad they don't allow your skin to breathe uh they are heavy if you're a if you're a if you're not a very uh you know like a big strong person you're one of those 
thinner slimmer people uh, then you you almost can be weighed down on one side by the weight of the past uh, and that happens to people but somebody thought of 3d printing them uh, to your hand size so here you have a cast that can actually uh, be made to your hand size it's a very simple thing it takes about anywhere between half an hour to one hour depending on the size of the person and uh, you can 3d print a cast that would fit exactly where it's supposed to address the restructuring of your joints as they are required to and it can be medically uh, it is it is medically viable as well uh, it can be just printed in a hospital uh, right then and there and attached onto the patient right so it is a designed object it is uh, thought through it addresses a medical need and it changes perceptions about how uh, one would be how comfortable one would be if they were in a cast right among the first things when somebody breaks a bone is like oh my god i'm going to have to wear a cast for the next two months or three months or one month whatever it is right it just changes that perception it makes it a lot more easy for these people to go about their regular life with a cast of course you can have you need you probably need a much better cast if it is a more serious uh, problem but at least a larger chunk of the people can can be supported and helped with something like this now let's take a little step up and we talk about how mobile connectivity in africa is everyone thinks that africa is also oh, bad there's no connectivity those countries have the countries are still in the this country is still developing there's absolutely uh, very a lack of mobile connectivity in africa i'd beg to differ there are chatbots in africa today uh, apart from social networking these chatbots are allowing people to get access to education to healthcare they are allowing farmers to get updated prices of products that they are selling uh, so they can actually send a ask the chatbot a question and the chatbot will respond respond with the most updated price of that that vegetable or fruit that they are trying to sell and therefore allow these farmers to actually make the right kind of money that they should be making with the support of this uh, these chatbots and services are also being used for healthcare women who are pregnant can actually chat with this chatbot and get updates about uh, their first trimester second trimester how is their uh, pregnancy coming along what are the symptoms they are feeling and therefore connect them with nearby doctors as well so it's really sky is the limit of what you can do with these chatbots in an economy like this coincidentally kenya uh, ghana uh, is amongst the uh, where this photograph was taken from what i understand is amongst the largest growing mobile markets and you don't need very fancy mobiles here you just need ones that have basic 2g and 4g 2g 3g connectivity you don't need 4g and 5g technologies to do this uh, but the simple advantage is that now they have access to that information and they are actually using it the right way they are actually able to grow the advantage now is that society as a whole has more access to information they are able to sell their produce for the right value they are able to earn the money that they are supposed to and therefore they are able to grow so again a very important aspect of how design can transform people's life a very focused intended design here of course right uh, the next one is one of my personal favorites and i think it's uh, probably what transformed how we look at infant warmers and incubators in society today uh, everyone sees incubators and hospitals as this super fancy equipment that's lying in one side of the uh, you know the 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 birthing chamber or the birthing rooms especially right where if the baby is going to be premature the baby cannot maintain its body temperatures and therefore the baby has to kept be kept in this incubator or this uh, warmer infant warmers as they are called and they are expensive to maintain um, a developing economy or a least advantaged vulnerable society uh, community cannot have access to an incubator it's just expensive to set up so this particular company and they call the Inf embrace infant warmer it's already saved about 350000 lives uh, i'm going to quote some facts right uh, and you'll realize why they did it uh, every 10 seconds the world loses a newborn six babies die every minute and these are pretty recent facts that i'm quoting uh, 3 million of those babies die in the first 28 days of their life millions of these babies grow up with uh defects and uh, de debilitating health issues as well what this infant warmer does is a very simple thing it takes a face change material which is basically you can you can think of it as a waxy substance uh that when you heat it up uh, it's a basically a sheet you can keep that sheet on a chula or on a village gas it melts it is then inserted back into the baby warmer and then the baby is wrapped with this particular and of course it's like a sleeve for that waxy substance sheet 
and then the baby is wrapped up in that sheet and that particular waxy substance can maintain a healthy 98 degrees temperature for 8 hours that is enough for a baby to be warm through a cold night that is exactly what this has been able to achieve and i think it's whoever thought about it and whoever came up with it i think on at the grassroots level solved a lot of problems for people who don't have access to expensive healthcare today But what is important here to understand is the concept of absorbing. That you have to be able to absorb, that you have to be able to imbibe uh, as much as you can uh, with the people of the people that you're working with, and therefore understand what you're designing for, who you're designing for, what are the challenges that you might face when you're designing these designing these objects as well, and therefore grow as an individual. and that is something you have a great opportunity to do uh, in my opinion i think atria has got a phenomenal syllabus that they allow you to actually whether it's digital technologies renewable energy mobility sustainable uh, solutions for better health whatever the topics they have in their curriculum today in my opinion uh, allows you to explore all these different aspects and facets of being a designer and therefore probably reinvent yourself a couple of times through your education cycle itself